and you're welcome back to morning express now to set uh, the tone for our concluding segment uh, of interviews on morning express this morning we are being joined by uh, a muslim cleric imam yunusa abdul hamid uh, who will be speaking to us uh, on the Eid al Maulud celebration and ways of promoting peace and unity in nigeria in line with the islamic celebration Hello and good morning to you. Hello, good morning. You're very much welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. And uh, Id Mubarak to you uh, and the Muslim faithful as uh, well. Yeah, Id Maulud. Id Maulud. Id Maulud. All right. <laughs> All right. Imam, let's go over the importance of this observation to non-Muslims. People say it's the birth of profess, uh, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, to the Muslim faithful, it goes beyond just a birthday celebration. It is on the birth of one of the prophets that shaped some of the most highly held tenets of Islam. Kindly inform our viewers again on how important the Eid al Malud is. Okay. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just to, just to start and to give you a preview of what uh, you ask of uh, the question. Uh, Eid Maulud is uh, a celebration that came after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It came after. So he himself did not celebrate it. Uh, the companion did not celebrate it. But uh, there are scholars who after he left or after his demise, they felt it's important for them to have a day set aside to celebrate the day he was giving birth to. And uh, his birth was actually a birth to you know, for reformation, a kind of uh, a way that humanity will be reformed. Because before his birth, people were actually living a lifestyle that do not connote with the dictate of God Almighty. People were actually having different gods, everyone worshipping what they feel like worshipping until he was ordained. At the age of 40, uh, he was ordained as a messenger. Uh, prior to his uh, birth, as I stated earlier, people were having different gods. But when he came, uh, he was giving birth to, he lived a pious life. That was from the beginning of his birth. And at that point, he was nicknamed Al-Amin, which means the trustworthy. In fact, the name Al-Amin actually overshadowed his real name, which is Muhammad. And uh, because he was a different person entirely from other youth around him or around the community. He was nicknamed because people trusted him. Now, uh, because of this character that he actually, you know, showcased, uh, he was ordained as, as a prophet at the age of 40 and as a messenger of God Almighty. He lived around people who were not Muslims. He lived with them. He helped them. He actually you know, devote his time to listen to them, to listen to their problems. In fact, they kept their properties with him because they trusted him. That is to show that even as a Muslim, and as a Muslim, he was so benevolent and he was so kind and so, so empathic to people who are non-Muslims. And that actually gave them the platform for them to trust him and trust his credibility. Now to the non-Muslims. As Muslims, we actually are expected to replicate this life, the life of the Prophet وسلم, in our own life. Like just moving his life from the era he lived to the era that we are. Most especially as it has to do with, you know, a, an environment or community like Nigeria. The Prophet وسلم, lived in a community that is cosmopolitan in nature people from different tribes, different ethnic, different religion. So also is Nigeria. How did the Prophet ﷺ live with the people? It is what every Muslim should make research and learn and be able to replicate it in their life. It starts from our neighbor. Now, now Imam uh, Yunusa, mm. in keeping with the uh, promotion of peace and unity in the country mm -hmm. we know how very diverse nigeria is in terms of religion in terms of ethnicity and tribe mm -hmm. and if if you are up to date with social media trends you'd find that there is 
always a lot of animosity on the uh, social media space between religions, between tribes and all of that. How do we create or sensitize uh, 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 the general public to understand that in as much as we are diverse in religion and tribe and ethnicity, mm -hmm. we are one as Nigerians. Mm -hmm. You know, the existence of religion is actually not to separate people. It's actually not to promote disunity amongst people. The, the idea behind religion was to unite people. That was why when God Almighty ordained any prophet or any messenger, the focus is on uniting people based on the you know, doctrine of monotheism. That is to worship one God. That is unity in God, yes. or uni un unionism in God, mm -hmm. in the worship of God. And that should also translate to our contemporary society. As, you know, as we have diverse religion, should religion be a, a mean or something that should cause, you know, disunity amongst us? The answer is totally no. Why? Because the person whom we are talking about today, or whom the Muslim community are celebrating today, live with non-Muslims. And bringing him to the Nigerian as a society today, if he were to be here today as the leader of the Muslims, the, what we are having in terms of animosity and mistrust or distrust amongst different religions will not be there. Because there is uh, a British author, uh, Karen Armstrong, he said, and I quote, that the legacy of Muhammad, uh, I may not be quoting verbatim, he says the legacy of Muhammad is of paramount importance because of the compassion and sh social justice that he propagated in his book, uh, the, uh, Muhammad, the, the biography of the Prophet. So this shows that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man, an individual that was recognized by even non-Muslim authors, you know, non-Muslim writers, historians. They recognize him. In fact, there is uh, this man who wrote a book, and he says uh, the name of the book was 100 Most Influential Person. Uh, the name is trying to escape my memory. He, he Amongst the most 100 influential person in the world, in the world yes. he that put, have ever lived. Ever lived. He put Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the number one of, the, uh, of uh, the, the personalities. And that shows that this person that we are talking about today, this individual, is beyond being just a human being. He's someone whose heart is being controlled by God Almighty because he lived an exemplary life that every Muslim should copy and be able to replicate it in any society that you live in. Just as I started to say, I, I was saying earlier, it has to start with our family level to our neighbor, the closest person to you, even if the person is a non-Muslim. Because the, we learn from history, which is Sirah of the Prophet, that he himself lived with non-Muslims as neighbors. And he lived with them he, with, you know, trust, he lived with them in a peaceful way, and in fact, he gave them the platform for them to, you know, spread their religion, to talk about their religion. He called them, in fact, he invited invite them to his own mosque to have discussion with them. So whenever he have Christians or uh, Jews from other nations, in fact, he, you know, uh, addressed them and, as a you know, received them in his Musk, because that is where he has as his office, understand. So, and as Muslims, we should be able to replicate this in our contemporary society in promoting peace and unity. Now, in credits to Muslim, mm. a lot of non-Muslims in Nigeria would attest that when there is a Muslim festival, yeah. many non-Muslims are very happy to come celebrate because there is that spirit of hospitality and yeah. generosity. Mm. Most always mistake when there will be Ram celebrations. Yes. But in keeping with Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, mm. is some of the activities that would outline this Eid El Malud. How can Muslims and both non Muslims in promoting unity observe this festival together? Okay, uh, this particular Eid that uh, Muslims do celebrate, uh, just to put the, the fact straight, 
uh, in Islam, there are two cardinal Eid, which is celebration, which is Eid Kabir and Eid al-Fitr. Eid Maulud is not known to Islam right from the beginning of Islam. As I stated from the earlier uh, introduction, it was later introduced, introduced by some scholars. So in during Eid al-Kabir, which is uh, Eid al-Adha, that is where the Muslims are expected to replicate the life and the practice of Prophet Abraham, whom uh, we revered and as well hold in high honor. So we practice what he himself practiced, which is the slaughtering of, you know, uh, you know, Ram during that period, that is Eid al-Adha. Then Eid al-Kabir, it is when we break our fast, the ending part of our, our fast, the month of Ramadan. So at every stage of the Eid, the idea behind the Eid is to bring people together, togetherness. And at that stage, as Muslims, we are expected to make provision for the less privileged within the Muslim community so that they can also, you know, have the opportunity to celebrate the Eid just like any other person is celebrating with, ha you know, having what they need to eat, you know, having what they need to put on in terms of neat clothes and, you know, scent, you know, beautifully and look beautifully. And as well as for the non-Muslims, we are expected to live and celebrate this festivity with them in in the like you know inviting them to our homes to have you know gatherings where we eat together and share and discuss issues around us in order for us to create that uh, trust amongst ourselves and to live in peace and harmony are there any special prayers for this it el malud that you would be offering at the mosque later today alongside all the Muslim faithful on behalf of our current state in Nigeria? Yeah, unlike uh, the Eid al-Kabir, the two Eid, which is enshrined in Islam, we don't have like a specific prayer that we have to, where, where we gather together, like Eid al-Kabir and Eid al-Adha, we gather together to observe, you know, prayer and also pray for the country. But during Eid al-Adha, as I stated earlier, it is not enshrined, so there is no uh, guidelines to what should be done and what should not be done. So what you see on the street, people doing, maybe to concluding part, what we see on the people on the street uh, with some people doing is actually not Islamic, like people the, the, the processions. The procession. This is totally out of Islam. That people are expected to celebrate the Prophet ﷺ in their character, in their attitude, in their behavior. The Prophet should replicate. You should be. The Prophet should be seen in your character. How you live peacefully with people. How you talk. How you dress. How you eat. In fact, how you go to toilet. The Prophet ﷺ taught us. So. In every aspect of the life of every Muslim, we should see the Prophet in you. People should trust you as a Muslim when you appear as a Muslim. People should trust you as a Muslim when you talk as a Muslim. Now, now Imam Yunus, mm -hmm. I believe a lot of people would want to know uh, what particular sects of Islam mm -hmm. are observing this Eid al uh, celebration, or is it all-encompassing uh, for the entire Muslim community worldwide? Yes, the, when you talk about sect, Islam actually promotes one ummah, one community. Understand, it promotes one community. At the initial stage of Islam, though, to clear misconception, Muhammad did not bring Islam. Islam had been there before Muhammad. He only, he only came to, you know, uh, reform the people and be able to, you know, make the people to realize the, the kind this Islam practice by prophets before him, like Prophet Noah, Abraham, in fact Jesus Christ, we Muslim believe he's a Muslim because a Muslim is one who totally believe and submit to the will of God Almighty. So the sect that promotes this celebration are uh, the Dorika set, the Torika set, they promote it from you know from the angle that of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They promoted that they want to show love and passion for the personality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But one thing that we need to understand is that 
the scholars who actually started this, their intention was to gather people together at a point or at within a location and narrate to them the life history of the Prophet Sallallahu After narrating the good, the good character, the good behavior, the good attitude of the Prophet Sallallahu then they will share food for people to eat. And that ends it there. But at time continue to move, people started to go astray from what the, those scholars actually were, you know, worked on and they, you know, uh, built upon. Um, people, the procession you see today, people carrying placards, people carrying uh, pictures of uh, some scholars on the street blocking road, these are totally out of Islam. So for us as Muslims, uh, not every Muslim actually celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu within this day or on this day. Because what we believe is that the Prophet Sallallahu he is being worthy to be celebrated every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every part of the year in our life. The Prophet Sallallahu is not to be relegated just to be celebrated within one day. Whereas after that one day, you went back to doing any other things that actually do not connote or correspond with the life of the Prophet Sallallahu So the Prophet Sallallahu should be celebrated every day in your life as Muslims. And that is what we promote. Uh, let's talk about the Shiite movement, mm -hmm. especially the processions that have happened every year, mm -hmm. which oftentimes don't end up quite good. We saw that this year in, in Abuja mm -hmm. at the Wuse area of, uh, of, of the city, yeah. There was a procession and there was a clash with policemen. Some people lost their lives. And this appears to be a reoccurring issue year after year. Mm. Is there something that maybe other Muslims or even non-Muslims mm. do not know about this procession that is always causing this particular problem that leads to the loss of lives? You see, my, my brother, uh, you know what was not enshrined during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during the first four companions, that is Abu Bakr, Uthman, Omar, and Ali, and the companions that came after them, what does not, what was not enshrined during their time cannot be Islam. No matter how you people want to try to picture it to be Islamic, understand. The issue of procession, it has no place in Islam at all. It has no place that there was a time that companions and the prophet actually moved from one location to the other in group to solidarity for solidarity or for what? Whatever means or whatever you know uh, idea behind it, it or it is unfounded. That procession is, is unfounded in Islam. It, it can it may be due to political understanding or some people actually want to create awareness about the group they belongs to because i actually don't call these people as sect i call them as group or organization that promotes what their leaders want them to promote and some of them are actually being sponsored from outside the country and that is why you see the leaders who are benefiting from the sponsors are actually pushing forward to make sure that the followers innocently do what they are doing, understand? And for us as Muslims, we are still sensitizing in our various mosques that youth should, you know, create, be aware that this, what is happening is totally un-Islamic and they should not be involved in it. Well, Imam, we must thank you for taking our time to come here and inform our viewers on the significance and essence of celebrating the Eid El Mulud and we wish you the best of the celebration and the best of the week going forward. Thank you so much for having me in your studio and I hope to be here once you invite me once again. Thank you, most definitely.